we want to find the Maclaurin series for f of x equals 3x squared times sine 9x, which we're told can be written in this form here. And then we're asked to find the first few coefficients, c sub 3 through c sub 7. Because we're looking for a Maclaurin series, we know the series is centered at x equals zero. We normally say c equals zero. To find the Maclaurin series, we could apply this formula here where we have the summation from n equals zero to infinity of the nth derivative of f evaluated at zero divided by n factorial times x to the nth, which equals this in expanded form. But finding the higher order derivatives of our given function would be fairly complicated because we'd have to apply the product and chain rule each time. So instead of taking this approach, we'll actually use the known power series for sine x given here to build the Maclaurin series. Notice how this power series for sine x is centered at zero. And most textbooks do give a table of power series for elementary functions similar to the one here. Looking at the power series for sine x, notice how this can be written as the summation from n equals zero to infinity of negative one to the nth because the signs alternate. And then all the powers on x are odd so we have x to the power of two n plus one, and the denominator are all odd factorials, so we have two n plus one factorial in the denominator. So now to build the Maclaurin series for our function, to find the power series for sine nine x, we would substitute nine x for x, and then take that power series, and then multiply by the polynomial factor of three x squared. So we can say that three x squared sine nine x would be equal to three x squared times this power series here where we substitute nine x for x. Let's go ahead and write the power series using summation notation. So we'd have times the summation from n equals zero to infinity of negative one to the nth times instead of x raised to the power of two n plus one, we would have nine x raised to the power of two n plus one, and then divided by two n plus one factorial. But let's go ahead and write this in this form here. So let's write this as the summation from n equals zero to infinity of negative one raised to the nth times three x squared times nine x raised to the power of two n plus one divided by two n plus one factorial. Now here this could be simplified because we can write nine as three squared. We do have a common base of three as well as a common base of x squared. We could leave it in this form but I'll go ahead and simplify it anyway. So if we have three x squared, that's three times x squared times nine raised to the power of two n plus one can be written as three squared to the power of two n plus one. And then we have x raised to the power of two n plus one. So we have three to the first times, here we'd multiply the exponents. That's three to the power of four n plus two. We have times x squared times x to the power of two n plus one. So we have three raised to the power of four n plus three times x to the power of two n plus three. Let's go ahead and write it in that form. So our function f of x, which equals three x squared sine nine x is equal to the summation from n equals zero to infinity of, we still have negative one raised to the power of n, and then we have times three raised to the power of four n plus three times x raised to the power of two n plus three. Or again, we could just leave it in this form here. This is all divided by two n plus one factorial. So here's our Maclaurin series for our function, and now we'll generate the first several terms to find c sub three through c sub seven. Let's do this on the next slide. Let's go ahead and use the Maclaurin series in this form here. Notice when n is zero, we would have negative one to the zero, that's one, three raised to the power of three, or three cubed, 
times x raised to the power of three, or x cubed, divided by one factorial. When n is one, notice how the term would be negative, so we have minus, and then we'd have three to the four times one plus three, the seventh power, times x to the fifth power, divided by three factorial. When n is two, the term is positive, so we have plus three to the power of four times two plus three, that's eleven, times x to the power of two times two plus three is seven, divided by two times two plus one factorial or five factorial. Of course, this continues, but these are the only three terms that we need. So the first term would be twenty-seven x cubed, and then we have minus, we have three to the seventh, right arrow, divided by three factorial, which is six. Let's convert this back to a fraction, so we'll press math, enter, enter. So we have minus 729 halves x to the fifth. And then we have plus of three to the eleventh, divided by five factorial, we can enter five factorial by pressing five, math, probability, option four. Let's convert this back to a fraction, so we'll press math, enter, enter. Notice how it won't convert back to a fraction, but by hand it would come out to fifty-nine thousand, forty-nine, divided by forty, and this would be x to the seventh. And again, this continues, but we have the information we need to find the coefficients. C sub three would be twenty-seven. There is no degree four term, so C sub four is zero. C sub five would be negative seven hundred twenty-nine divided by two. There's no degree six term, so C sub six is zero. And C sub seven is fifty-nine thousand forty-nine divided by forty. Before we go, let's look at the graph of the original function and compare it to the graph of the polynomial function formed by using the first three terms here of the Maclaurin series. This would be called a Maclaurin polynomial. The original graph is in blue and the Maclaurin polynomial is graphed here in red. Notice around x equals zero where the Maclaurin series was centered the red polynomial function is a good representation of the original function graphed in blue. And the more terms we added, the better approximation it would be. I hope you found this helpful.